Welcome back to this special edition of Hannity. Democrats are now openly telling each other not to completely freak out about the possibility of Joe Biden losing big next year. But the Dems have good reason to be really worried right now. Donald Trump leads Biden by a significant margin in almost every swing state, not to mention overall nationwide. And in this time of personal and political crisis for the president, what's Joe doing? Well, he's hiding out at the $34 million mansion of a friend on Nantucket, taking a polar plunge in the frigid water with his family, watching his kids and grandkids take selfies and photos on the dock and on the beach, and of course, shopping with his son, Hunter. Joe doesn't seem to have a care in the world right now, and he better enjoy himself because next year, it's not shaping up to be a fun one for him. Here with Reaction is the author of the new book, The Constitution of the United States and Other Patriotic Documents, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, along with Democratic strategist Doug Schoen and Tammy Bruce, Fox News contributor, is also joining us. Uh, Doug, but I want to start with you because, I mean, Joe Biden in swing states, uh, it doesn't look too good at this point. Now, to polls change. Obama was behind and he came back, but I don't see how in the world Joe Biden, the policies aren't on his side and he doesn't, he's not going to have more vigor. It's not like more cowbell with Joe Biden out on the campaign trail can solve these problems. Well, Jason, you're right. Uh, his poll numbers are dropping. His approval rating is, is at or below 40%, which is beyond a danger sign. The only thing he really has going for him is what's worked before, abortion and a negative campaign against the likely Republican nominee, Donald Trump. And that's why Democrats are rallying around him. It's worked before. They're hoping it can work again. Now, Tammy, um, you know, hanging out on a $34 million mansion on the beach while, you know, wars are raging and Americans are are struggling, um, that's not exactly the best look, is it? I mean, he just seems to be oblivious to that or just that doesn't care or, I mean, I just think that's who he is, but it's really not a good look, is it? Yeah. Y you know, it's, it's how they've lived. Uh, it is um, a, an outrageous display considering the financial issues that he and his family are facing that are, uh, you know, questionable to say the least that in fact could, you know, be dealing with money and favors from other countries, uh, the issue of, of bribery being discussed. So it is a very interesting dynamic when Americans are still asking, how is it that you can spend your life in public service and be living this kind of luxurious lifestyle? We're getting a hint of perhaps how. But I think what this tells us, Jason, is that this is just simply what it's been like for most of his adult life. It's what his family's life has been like. They've lived off the largesse of the American taxpayer. It has been a game to them. They see what our, our hard work is being something that gets them their beach houses. And I want everyone to be successful. Make no mistake about that. But this is, in a, in a sort of a way, kind of robbery. When you're doing things for your own benefit, when you're supposed to be doing things for the country's benefit, and you're doing it because it's getting you, you know, rich, and it's not just him, but investing uh, apparently his entire family. So in a, in a holiday where money is a problem, where the economy is tough, where uh, uh, over 70 percent of Americans don't like the direction of the country, they're almost thumbing their noses at us. And I think, obviously, that's going to move through next year as well. Now, Greg, I want you to listen to Jen Psaki. This is day one of the Biden administration where she was promis promising us openness and transparency. I want to get your reaction on the other side of this. When the president asked me to serve in this role, we talked about the importance of bringing truth and transparency back to the briefing room. But his objective and his commitment is to bring transparency and truth back to government, uh, to share the truth even when it's hard to hear. It's been hard to hear because I well, don't think I've heard much of it from them. <laughs> yeah, none of it is true. And the American public has reacted adversely. And now the campaign for Joe Biden is begging Democrats to rally behind him. 
And look, pleading the case for Joe Biden is like defending the indefensible. It's hypocritical and it's phony, which is why his support is sinking. You know, to most Americans suffering under inflation and high interest rates and a crushing economy, the slogan Bidenomics is an ugly epithet. People can't afford Bidenomics. So when Joe Biden keeps touting it, He's only reinforcing his own negative. And then you factor in the border disaster, the flood of migrants, surging crime, foreign policy blunders, an incompetent running mate in Kamala Harris, and his own mental infirmities. And you've got an electorate that is sour decidedly on Joe Biden. And no amount of re-messaging, Jason, can rectify this perception of failure that's reflected in the polls. The remedy is to reverse course, but it's way too late for that. Joe Biden is wedded to this leftist agenda that has proven more destructive than constructive, and voters, Jason, are alienated. Uh, Doug, you mentioned earlier, you know, there's the abortion issue, right? They're obviously yes. going to use that. But and they talk about Bidenomics. I don't know that they've ever really truly defined what Bidenomics means, because you could try to tell people numbers are better and good. But if they don't feel it, they don't feel it. So you're you're a very bright strategist. What do you think they're going to do over the next 12 months to actually make the difference that they need? Well, you know, I, I wish I could disagree with you, uh, Jason, and certainly with what Greg and Tammy have said, but I can't. And I know both uh, as a real world uh, uh, person living day to day that inflation interest rates are tough on people, which is why I said before, and I would reiterate, expect very little as the campaign gets started about failed policies expect attacks on Donald Trump, uh, fear-mongering on what will happen when the Republicans take power on abortion and other issues. Because when you can't win with a positive campaign, you go negative. And it worked in 2018, 2020, and 22, and even in the 23 off-year elections. That's what we're going to get. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're being told by their strategists given what you're hearing tonight, which is all fair and accurate, I must confess. Uh, Tammy and Greg, we have a very short amount of time, but A, do you think Joe Biden will continue to be the nominee? And do you think they just go nu nuclear and just say, you know, scorched earth, everything's bad, MAG is bad, everything's bad. Is that their only way out? Yeah. Well, it, you know, he spent uh, 50, his 50 years in government to get to this point. He's not going to give it up easily. He doesn't want to. The people running him want to remain in power. Anybody else who actually wants to be a president will not want the same team involved. And you're, you're going to see more buildings, you know, drenched in red light. You, they already have contempt for the American people. Uh, they, they believe we're idiots. They think they can move through on the same theme. It's up to us to make sure that they're wrong. But I think as long as he can hang on with his fingernails, he will be the nominee. Uh, and I, I don't know if that's going to change, but it'll be a big fight Greg? in order for it to, to change. Greg, to you. We've only you know, at the height seconds, of, uh, what's your thought? At the height of Vietnam, uh, it was abundantly clear to LBJ that he was probably not going to get reelected. He did the right thing. Uh, held an address in front of the American people and said he was not going to run. Uh, Joe Biden is no Lyndon Johnson. Joe Biden seems addicted to the perks of office, preoccupied with luxury and wealth. He's not about to give it up. And his enablers, his families enjoy it just as much as he does. They will continue to urge him yeah. to run for reelection, even though he'll be more than 86 years old by the end of the next term if reelected. I happen to think the right answer is I don't think Joe Biden will be the nominee. I think Thanksgiving or around the Christmas holidays, good time to, to bow out. And even though the Republicans may have the best candidate and all the issues, or at least the majority of the issues on their side, the ground game of the Democrats still gives them the advantage. They have leveraged that, they have used that, and Republicans don't have much of an answer. That's that's my worry. That's my concern. That's my perspective. Greg, Doug, and Tammy, 
Happy Thanksgiving. Thank Thanks you. for joining us tonight on Hannity. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.